Hello, this is David Wormsey and in this video I thought it was time to take a look at a topic I covered in a blog post and video some months earlier and that is using the Beaver Builder plugin to replace our themes, headers and footers. Now this is a really powerful thing to be able to do and it gives us much more flexibility particularly when it comes to headers and allows us to do our editing from the front end but it also comes with some considerations and I didn't really talk about those in the last video. Plus, there's been so much development since I talked about this. I mainly featured one free plugin and now there's at least another one which you could choose. And I think there's some big things ahead for the Beaver Builder plugin, an extender that's coming along or an add-on which may change things altogether. So I just wanted to mention them and I've created this blog post. You don't really need to watch the rest of this video. What I'm going to do is to cover the details in this blog post or some of them and then just show you the back end of some of the plugins that I'm talking about. Okay, so let's move on and we'll talk about the first plugin. Now this is what I really talked about in the last video and it's J7 Digital's header and footer template plugin. It's free, you just need to click on this link to go to his website and download it. But it only works with the Beaver Builder theme. Now, what I'm covering here is just some of the changes since I did my last video. So he's added some new features. The, the first is the obvious one that I'm showing here, which is this overlay effect or transparent header, depending on what you call it. And I think you can probably see what's happening here is that the this is a replacement header, which is inserted, but it's allowing the content below, in this case it's a slider, but it's typically an image to lift up to the top of the browser. And then the content of the header, the logo here, and the navigation here is overlaid on the top. He's also made it so you can have a fixed header. So your replacement header, template header that you're placing in the top here can be fixed if you choose. And when you scroll down, this stays on the top. And one other thing is it now isn't just the header and footer areas. He's created another section where you can insert any other save template into any of the hookable areas of the Beaver Builder theme. So quite a lot changed there, quite a lot of improvement. And I'll cover this more when I go and look at the back end. And also new, which I haven't covered, is this plugin from Brainstorm Force. These are the people behind the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder. And very similar to Jay's, in fact, I think they were the first to create that simple overlay effect with a replacement header. But theirs is now uh, quite a simple one. It just does the header and the footer and that global overlay effect. But the great thing about this one is it also works on the Genesis framework and the Generate Press theme. So that's something new for those folks that they didn't have before. And finally, this one isn't quite the same as the two above. This is a schema.org settings for Beaver Builder. And this one comes from Firetree Design. These are the people behind Beaver Tunnels. Now, if you don't know about Beaver Tunnels, it is a premium plugin, a very powerful one that does very similar things. It allows you to hook in save templates or modules into any hookable area of three themes, the Beaver Builder theme, Generate Press, and also Genesis. And you can set these all conditionally, and there's a lot of conditions that you can set for it. It's a very powerful plugin, but previously I was critical of it because it didn't have any setting to add in or add back, if you like, the HTML or schema.org markup which is removed when you remove from your theme your headers and footers. And I think these are quite important things. So they've created this plugin, which effectively just allows you with a tab in your row settings to be able to add in that markup. So if you want to place that then in any area, and it's going to be particularly useful if you are a Beaver Tunnels user, which I am. So that's great. I'm guessing if you hook in the stuff yourself manually with code, and I've given an example of how you might want to do that with the Beaver Builder theme, I'm guessing that you're probably going to be comfortable with adding any of that markup yourself. But maybe not. Maybe this will be still convenient there. It may well be convenient as well if you're just using landing pages and you just want to mark up one of your headers with that schema as well. So it's still got a use outside of Beaver Tunnels, I think. And maybe they're going to advance this plugin as well to add other schema elements. So you could add them to any 
other rows. Anyway, so that's that. Um, as I say, Beaver Tunnels here, that's, um, you can go and check this out at my live demo site, and I've got a video there. And finally, I just wanted to talk about whether it's a good idea using these replacement headers. Now, it certainly does give you a lot of flexibility and can be really handy and can work under certain circumstances, but there are some issues, as I mentioned earlier, about trying to get alignment when you're using the replacement menu module with the Beaver Builder theme. So you need your menu typically in your header and you have to use this. And you know, you often find that you can't get alignment without using some CSS, which is generally not a big deal, but it could be a problem to some people. And finally, I think the big thing is what's changing with Beaver Builder itself. We've only really got a hint at the moment, but we're not far away, I think, from their, their theme builder extension for Beaver Builder coming out in alpha. So I think it's been on their public roadmap for some time, and it's had this quote here about what it's doing. And at this point, when they put it out, when they first put it on the roadmap, it didn't say too much. It said they're just exploring the implementation of header and footer building. But in the latest blog post or the December one, the update there, it seemed a lot more optimistic. This theme builder, if that's what it's going to be called when it comes out, seems more clear that it's going to be able to help you create headers and footers. In fact, the entire website. Um, so this is, as they say, going to be big. It certainly is. So this is another consideration if we're thinking about doing those header and footer replacements. You know, this may be coming out, allowing us to be able to style more of our headers and footers anyway, presumably with any theme. But also one of my considerations is as well, I try to work with the existing header as much as I can and my skills will allow because I, I tend to think, well, whatever the theme is, it might come with some new options for your header, which you wouldn't have available to you if you replace them so easily. So it, it depends how you're going to use it. So that's all I really wanted to comment on there. And just in case you weren't aware of it, now let me go and have a look at the individual plugins. So we'll start off with Jay's and I'm in the back end already for this. So when you've downloaded and installed and activated Jay's plugin, you have to go to the customizer in your Beaver Builder theme and it adds this new tab here, header footer. And he gives you pretty good instructions on what to do. I've already mentioned that it does the header footer and there's also another area here, another content area where you can choose. So maybe a, a common scenario might be you want a top bar as well as a header and a footer, but you know, it's up to you and you've got all of these huckable areas to choose from to place it now i'm not sure exactly everyone works in the right circumstance and if you i mean obviously you can just turn these on but if you want a clue to where these are positioned can i suggest that you go over to probeaver.com where our vendor set up these beaver hooks visual guide here which shows you exactly where they are placed within the beaver builder theme which is really quite handy so uh, that's that one thing you do need to do when you're using this one is that you need to switch off the header and the footer or you'll get two of them um, and you can do that easily in the customizer in the header and the footer sections you can select them to none not to show and then you can use this so let's just have a quick look at the overlay sections here it's given two choices here you can have it just to show on your home page or you can have it showing on all of the pages and that's the same with the fixed header option, the one that holds the header in place. You can have it on just the home page only or all of the pages. Something to note on the overlay on all of the pages, and I can show you this uh, if we go over to the blog. See, that's one issue there. When you use this effect there and you've got dark, you may need your home page to be CSS lightened where the other pages are different. But here you are. There's the issue. It's going to move up these archive pages and individual blog pages up as well and that might not suit so you would probably need to do a css fix if you were using this technique uh, across the whole of the site but otherwise i think that pretty much covers what this plugin does let's go and move over to the brain force one so here we are now with this one this one works differently you don't need to turn off any headers and footers it's working on all of the different themes here so 
you don't need to do that work. It's got simple selections here, so you just choose your header and your footer here. Now, uh, an odd decision of theirs is that it does allow it to use layout templates as well, but I wouldn't do that. I'd always use a save row template instead. You don't really want layout markup to be coming through on your page, I would have thought, but pretty simple to use this one. And there we have the transparent header, as they call it here, the same as the J's overlay effect. And of course, this is global, so it's going to have the same problem as Jay's does on your blog posts as well, or those archive pages. You're going to make need to make some CSS fixes if you choose to use that on this plugin. And finally, just a quick look now at the one by um, Beaver Tunnels, guys. And this one, as I mentioned, pretty simple. Once you create a row, you can just go into your row settings and over here we have the schema tab and we can select at the moment just the header and footer uh, i suspect they may add some more schema to this so we'll have more choices but there we are once you've added that in it adds the correct markup the html and the schema markup to that particular row so if you were inserting that somewhere else that's going to show okay so as i say this might be useful if you're not a beaver tunnels user user it still could be quite useful on those landing pages it allows you to put some proper header markup on your you know your top section which might be quite useful okay so i think that pretty much covers everything as i say it's one to be looking out at the moment a lot is going to change again i'm sure i'm going to be revisiting this topic anyway i hope this was useful to you if you liked it then please give me a like if you didn't like it then please tell me why but i hope to see you on the next video so bye bye